Hey guys, Chef Nick Peter Fond here, and this is Command Your Kitchen. On today's episode, I felt like treating myself. I think everyone needs to treat themselves once in a while, and my favorite cake of all time is carrot cake. I've been making it for years, especially for my catering company, and now that we're back on the full swing with weddings and stuff, I feel like, you know what? Now is the perfect time to make this. I Mine's a little bit different than your typical carrot cake. I do add a ton of stuff in it, and some people either love that or some people hate it, but to me, it's the perfect harmony of uh, textures and it's moist. I don't really know the word moist. It's moist, it has texture, it's dense but not too dense. Like it's like thick with like 17 seeds. Like it's it's so good. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you like making videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up. As always, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And you can click the notification bells if you want to be notified when I do post my videos. I try to drop them every single Thursday. And they might drop a little video here and there in between. So without further ado, this is my ultimate carrot cake. Okay, so you're gonna want to grate three medium to large size carrots, and then the same thing, three medium to large size parsnips on a box grater. I'm only one carrot in, and my new ring light that my husband got me is awesome, but I'm already sweating because it's so bright. So we're gonna finish up grating these. I'll dry my forehead off because I'm beating sweat, and then we'll come back. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start my dry ingredients, and then we're just going to whisk those together to kind of like sift them and then set them aside. So for this carrot cake, I've made this a lot, <laughs> especially with my catering company when we do like our curbside takeout. Unfortunately for me, I have recently had to become gluten-free and watch my lactose and a lot of other things, but if you you can easily substitute this for regular all-purpose flour. If you are interested in gluten-free, this is a Bob's Red Mill, good old Bob. It's a great brand and it's exact um, conversion. So it's one to one. So there's no worry about having to do conversions or anything like that. And a half cups of flour. Again, you can use all purpose. I'm using the gluten free flour. I love the, the way that this comes out. Not coming out of here. <laughs> all right, so two and a half cups of flour. I'm going to be doing two teaspoons of baking powder. And these are just our leavening agents. Then I'm going to be doing, where did I put my baking soda, Nick? Oh, right here. As you can see, my island in my house is very small, so hopefully <laughs> in the near future, I'll be getting a different kitchen island, but um, some baking soda. And then in my opinion, almost very important is salt. You guys are gonna think I'm a savage for using a teaspoon of salt in this, but just trust me. All right, and then the other ing dry ingredient is cinnamon. I always put a little bit of warm spice into my carrot cake. You don't have to, it's not a ton. I'm putting in a teaspoon. Um, you could do like a little bit of nutmeg if you wanted to, but again, it's more about the carrots in this recipe and the parsnips than it is about, you know, an overly spiced cake. Okay, so these are our dry ingredients. I'm gonna whisk this together, which is just kind of also like kind of sifting them together and just incorporating everything. And then we're gonna set this aside and we are going to work on our wet ingredients. All right, so that looks nice. Set that aside. Okay, so for our wet ingredients, I'm using all brown sugar for this recipe. You can definitely substitute uh, half white, half brown, but I really love the depth of flavor that brown sugar has. It just has a little bit more like that molasses flavor that I think pairs really well in a carrot cake. And let's see. For this recipe, we're going to need about two cups of sugar. Again, I'm using all brown. And I've made this recipe so many times and Every time I do it, I try to see it, tweak it, and see if I can add stuff. But I really love a ton of stuff in my carrot cake. 
All right. So brown sugar, three eggs, one cup of vegetable oil. And I love using vegetable oil in this cake versus cream and butter because I feel like vegetable oil definitely gives the cake just a super moist texture. And you're already gonna have that moisture from the carrots and the parsnips anyways, but it's just really, I'm a moist cake lover. I don't want any dry cake. That's like my biggest pet peeve is when you get cake and it's dry, I, I hate that. Okay, so I'm whisking that together, kind of breaking up those clumps of brown sugar. And in my wet ingredients, this is probably a controversial one for some people, but trust me on this, it's not necessarily too prevalent. It is crushed pineapple. I Some people love it in their carrot cake and some people don't. If you don't, don't use it, but I think you're gonna be missing out on a lot of moisture as well. And you're gonna leave, it's a half a cup of it, and you're not gonna drain it at all. It's okay to have some of that pineapple juice in there as well. That's just moisture, that's flavor, that's sweetness. All right. So half a cup of crushed pineapple goes in and mix that up. All right. And then once you have all those brown sugar lumps out and your pineapple is incorporated, we are going to alternate with a cup of, I'm using oat milk today. Again, because of my stupid restrictions, you don't have to. I do find that if you're looking for a non-dairy milk, oat milk is 100% the best in terms of creaminess, texture, flavor. It's just great and baked good. So there's a cup of this in there. And then we're going to alternate with our dry ingredients. So we're gonna start with a cup of dry and then do a little bit, like a cup and a half. And start incorporating that. Guys, I need a bigger kitchen island. Let's manifest that. <laughs> okay, fold this in. And then once that's starting to get incorporated, you can add a little bit of your oat milk. Again, you can use whole milk if you wanted to, or buttermilk. I am just trying to avoid the extra dairy, but this is going to taste delicious no matter what, because that oat flavor will pair really well with all the ingredients that we have going on in here. Oat milk. All right, so I'm gonna repeat these steps until it is completely homogenous and all the ingredients are incorporated. And then we'll add in our, basically our, our toppings and our add-ins, if you will, which are all, again, these are gonna be all, other than the carrots, <laughs> these are all gonna be optional. I should just start telling people it's not optional because this is the way that I would eat it, is with all the stuff in it, but feel free to kind of modify this at home. All right, so we are back. This is the batter that has all the dry ingredients and then all the wet ingredients, everything's combined. Now comes my favorite part, which is everything you add into it. I'm adding, this is all a half a cup, by the way, for all these, um, sweetened shredded coconut. I like pecans in terms of nuts and carrot cake. So half a cup of those and then half a cup of raisins. You can obviously use currants, you could use golden raisins. Anything like that would be so good. I'm all about texture, so I feel like when it comes to anything, if you've seen any of my videos, I always talk about texture and the contrast of that kind of vibe, and I really think it's important, especially when you're eating, you wanna have some sort of textural interest and have it not be just so one note. So put those in there, and then it goes in our carrots and parsnips. It's a lot, but you want, that's what you want. I mean, that's, it's after all, it's literally called carrot cake, so. Definitely expect carrots in it, right? I'm so annoying. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna fold in the carrots and parsnips, and honestly, parsnips are very similar to carrots. They just have a really nice, bright, almost citrusy flavor. They play well with carrots. They also are going to really just up this batter. And you'll see when they, I mean, you'll see if you make this, the taste and texture is just really, really amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into two separate nine inch um, greased cake pans and we're gonna bake it at 350 for, until it's done, <laughs> maybe like 40 minutes. And I'll put a toothpick in it just to check and make sure that it is completely cooked. And then we'll work on our 
cream cheese frosting. The cakes just came out, and uh, when I tell you the house literally smells amazing, take your toothpick, and that's it. Comes out clean, it's done, perfectly golden brown, nice and springy, perfect. Okay, now it's time to make the cream cheese frosting, or should I say cream cheese? No, don't come for me. <laughs> if you make this with regular cream cheese and regular butter, it would be better. But, you know, you heard my whole spiel about me not having lactose, so we're going to use um, the Tofuti cream cheese and then a lactose-free butter. And, yeah, so let's start. It's two sticks of butter. And then I'm using two of these um, of cream cheese, so... How many ounces is this bad battery? I'm like, no, it is eight ounces. Okay, so 16 ounces of cream cheese. So I guess that would be the two blocks of cream cheese softened as well. This is softened. And I've had this tofuti, I've had this tofuti once before, and it's really good. Um, I had it actually with, with a few of my friends up in North Conway, and there was this bagel spot, and they knew of my <laughs> struggles. <laughs> so they were like, you know what? This place has gluten-free bagels, so the bagel's great and the cream cheese is great, so I don't have complain. So you're going to beat this for about 30 seconds to a minute until it's doubled in volume and really fluffy, and then we'll throw in some vanilla and powdered sugar. Okay, so I added in some vanilla extract, about two teaspoons, and then I'm going to add in um, probably like half a pound of powdered sugar. I don't love a lot of recipes for cream cheese frosting to have more sugar because the cream cheese is so tangy and tart and some people you know they try to make it sweeter i like a more tart cream cheese frosting um so if you want a little bit sweet you could always add a little bit of maple syrup into this as well or some honey instead of just all powdered sugar that would be great as well so i'm going to continue to beat this this time on low um for an additional like minute ish and we'll see how this faux cream cheese reacts just in general and I can't wait to try it i'm excited so I'm going to add in just a splash of oat milk, um, probably two tablespoons, just to kind of get this frosting started because when I turned on my mixer, the sugar was like, uh, yeah, no. So I'm going to slowly do this. Okay, perfect. We're going to let this go for a minute. Okay, so I let my cakes cool for about a half an hour before I even attempted to take them out of the pan. There's been one many times where I tried to take them out before and it doesn't have ruined the cake. So. Have patience, I know it's hard, but <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, the cakes came out beautifully, perfectly golden brown. I suggest chilling this frosting for about 15 20 minutes before you use it. I had I found that it was a little bit thinner than like a regular cream cheese frosting would be. And to frost this, I'm not going to do anything fancy, that's for another channel. <laughs> I do things kind of just really rustic, but I guess I'm trying to make a cake for our goals. I'm not trying to impress, but more so the flavor. Just lightly cover the top and smooth it out and then we'll come back and try it. Alright, so I dusted the top with a little bit of cinnamon and then I put the toasted some a little bit of pecans and some of the sweetened coconut. As I drop it over here, and I just need to kind of garnish it up a bit. You know, make it look pretty for brand. It might be like a half moon kind of situation with this stuff. Am I making this up, or is this definitely something that I've seen? Like, <laughs> it's kind of like a trend when people kind of do like just a portion of the I kind of like that one. Or you could go all the way around, I guess, too, so everyone has some, but you know what? Just look for the, the picture, and you can cover this whole thing in. Um, just coconut, you could do literally no garnish and just eat it as is. Just put it a little extra something, something. So, yes. Alright, I'm gonna cut this bad boy open. It feels thick <laughs> in a good way. Like, I love new carrot cake. It's like super dense and moist. Huh? Look at that. Looks so good. So moist, so rich, and that is gluten-free, and that is dairy-free. I mean, you really can't go wrong. 
I had to try it, obviously. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm singing because this is so good. It has a great crumb to it, but it still has that rich carrot cake texture and flavor. Mm. I'm good at that one, guys. As always, if you like this channel, please subscribe, community in. Thank you, and you got this. <laughs>